This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. We will be comparing two very important processes in wastewater treatment the MBBR and the MBR. Now both MBBR and MBR have very similar acronyms or abbreviations. We have pretty much the uh, same letters, but they are completely different technologies. Let's start by the MBBR. So the M here means moving, the B, bed, the second B, biofilm, and the R is a reactor. So as this acronym suggests, we have some biofilm that are moving within a reactor. What are these biofilms? Actually, they look pretty much like these uh, plastic biofilm carrier, we named them, or MBBR media. And this media is actually placed in a reactor. This reactor can be uh, in aerobic conditions. So when we say aerobic, we have the diffusion of air through these air bubble diffusers. So we have air diffusion. And through this air diffusion, the MBBR media that is within this reactor will have a, a, a constant motion. So they will be moving within this uh, reactor. And also we have the creation of some aerobic conditions that are, uh, that is a very important condition. We have also another uh, uh, type of condition, which is the anoxic or the anaerobic condition. And for this, we will need a mixer. This mixer will keep the wastewater moving and therefore also this uh, biofilm carrier or this MBBR media will be also an emotion movement all the time. But here the main difference is that we don't have any air diffusion. So we don't have this aerobic condition. We have what we name it as anaerobic or anoxic conditions. The MBBR uses the suspended growth mechanism. So uh, on this plastic media, we will have the proliferation actually of some microorganisms that will be attached to these uh, media. And these microorganisms will highly reduce the organic matters within the wastewater. MBBR is actually an excellent technology to produce a, a very clear wastewater affluent. The MBR is a totally different technology. The M here means membrane. So membrane, we have somehow a filtration process and the BR is the bioreactor. So this is what an MBR uh, membrane or MBR sheets look like. Of course, we have extensive pretreatment before reaching the uh, membrane bioreactor stage. We have a pre-screening to highly reduce the total suspended solids. Also, we have to place our wastewater in anoxic conditions and aerobic conditions to be able also to highly reduce the nitrogen, the COD and the BOD. Finally, we have this stage, which is a secondary stage for the membrane bioreactor. And also this uh, membrane will be able to produce a highly treated wastewater effluent. So in summary, both MBBR and MBR are secondary uh, treatment processes. So the wastewater have to undergo a primary treatment, an extensive uh, primary treatment before reaching uh, these two processes. And both are totally different. One uses uh, biofilm carriers, so pl these uh, plastic carriers 
that we place them in reactors and tanks while the MBR uses an advanced filtration system using membrane filtration. I have already posted a very detailed YouTube video about the MBBR process as well as the MBBR uh, design calculations. We will go through the process uh, very quickly as a refresher and to be able to know the main differences be between this process and the MBR process. So for the MBBR, of course, we have first of all the primary treatments. The primary treatment can be a sedimentation tank. And in this sedimentation tank, we have the particles that will settle down by gravity and form a sludge. So we will have the formation of the sludge through the sedimentation of the solid particles. After this first step, which is a mandatory step, a crucial step, the wastewater can und undergo the secondary treatment, which is in this case the MBBR process. We have several schemes for the MBBR that can differ depending on the quality of wastewater that I, I want to reach. We are seeing here a scheme that is being able to reduce nitrogen and also to highly remove BOD and COD. First of all, we have the pre-denitrification or the anoxic tank using anaerobic conditions. So we are placing here a mixer, as you can see, and uh, these uh, small uh, uh, points or dots are actually the MBBR media. And notice that they are moving within this uh, reactor. So this is the pre uh, denitrification stage, then the wastewater will go through aerobic conditions by uh, diffusing air through these diffusers and we will be creating aerobic conditions and also a motion within this reactor. Through this stage we will be highly reducing BOD and COD and then we have the nitrification stage also through aerobic conditions. And by these two stages, the pre-denitrification and the nitrification, we will be able to highly reduce the nitrogen. Then at the end, we have a, a secondary uh, settling. So we have another sedimentation tank. And in this case, the particles will also have the chance to settle down by gravity and they will form an activated sludge that will be wasted. So wasted activated sludge, no need to return the sludge. So uh, there is no need for this. The activated sludge that is being formed in this secondary settling tank can be wasted. At the end of this process, we will have an excellent quality of effluent. Of course, this depends on having a, a very good designed MBBR wastewater uh, system. Now for the MPR, we have a totally uh, different uh, uh, technology. What we are seeing here is a packaged MBR system. So an MBR system that is in a container that we can uh, move and can be uh, pre-assembled and we can easily place this wastewater treatment system anywhere. For the MBR process, of course, we have the influent that will undergo a screening process. So this is my primary treatment. And this screening process is actually very, very crucial. We usually use a fine screen to highly reduce the total suspended solid. Then this wastewater will undergo anoxic stage. So also using a mixer, no aeration in this case. So we have two anaerobic stages using mixers. Then this wastewater will undergo aerobic stage. And in this aerobic stage, we have the uh, diffusion of air. As you can see here, we have these um, uh, air bubble diffusers that uh, have a round shape and they are diffusing air within this wastewater. Note that we don't have any media here in this case, just the water is placed in an aerobic condition. And finally, this wastewater will 
be filtered let's say through these MBR modules and also we have the diffusion of air so in aerobic conditions then we have the excellent affluent quality that can be safely disposed or even reused but not here we have a chemical cleaning tank so we have actually to clean these MBR models uh, very frequently so as you can see we have totally different processes one that rely on media on plastic media on these biofilm carriers and another that re rely on membrane filtration now let's go more in depth about uh, the comparison of these two processes for the MBR we have a suspended growth process we have this advanced membrane filtration for the MBBR we have the attached growth as we have already said that we have some microorganisms that will attach to this to these uh, MBBR meat the biomass separation for the MBR it will be through the membrane filtration for the MBBR it will be through the secondary clarifier as we have already seen in this clarifier we will be having the settling of the activated sludge for the footprint the MBR is more compact than the MBBR we can have very small uh, plants using the MBR also the MBBR has a small footprint but it is somehow larger than the MBR both are small let's say they require uh, less space for example compared to the activated sludge technology but the MBR is the smallest for the capital costs the MBR uh, is quite expensive you have to expect a high capital cost for the MBBR it is lower compared to the MBR but still both are uh, or both have uh, a high capital cost for the operating cost the MBR has a higher operating cost especially uh, uh, because of the uh, usage of this membrane we have we can face several problems uh, while running our wastewater treatment plant especially related to clogging problems for the MBBR we don't have these uh, clogging issues uh, we have smoother or easier uh, operation requiring uh, lower opera operating costs for the membrane fouling the MBR has it as a major issue and uh, this is a major drawback let's say when dealing with this technology it is uh, a, somehow a tricky uh, problem whenever we have a high whenever we have high suspended solids entering uh, this membrane we can face severe fouling problems that can uh, be very costly for the MBBR we don't have this problem at all because simply we don't have any uh, filtration or membrane filtration systems we only have these biofilm carriers that require minimal maintenance to no maintenance at all and uh, they have a relatively long lifespan uh, of at least 15 years to 20 years for nitrification and the nitrification capabilities so uh, when we want to highly reduce the nitrogen both can uh, reduce nitrogen but MBBR has a, uh, an excellent uh, let's say uh, results but also MBBR is uh, capable of highly reducing the nitrogen in the wastewater regarding uh, phosphorus removal both have moderate results also both have good shock load handling for the hydraulic retention time the MBR has a lower uh, HRT while the MBBR has a higher hydraulic retention time this is why uh, the MBBR requires more space the effluent quality is excellent for the MBR and also it is good for the MBBR so we can expect better uh, affluent quality for the MBR the operator skill level we need highly skilled operators in the MBR they must undergo excessive uh, trainings 
because we are dealing with delicate uh, membrane technology. For the MBBR, we need moderate skilled uh, operators. It is a less complicated technology compared to the MPR. And finally, for the energy consumption, we need a higher energy consumption for the MBR. And this is uh, why also we have a, a higher operating cost for the MBR. For the MBBR, we still need electricity, but it is lower compared to the MBR. So in summary, the MBR is able to produce a, a better effluent quality, a, high, a highly treated uh, wastewater compared to the MBBR, but it is more expensive, it is more sophisticated and can lead to more problems when operating such uh, treatment plants because of the membrane fouling. It is very delicate in terms of uh, operation, while the MBBR can produce good effluent quality with less headaches, let's say, with less operation costs and with less maintenance requirements.